good morning. My name is Mark Hayes. I'm from Hopton, Massachusetts, and I'm a member of the Massachusetts Military Museum. Uh, we're a reenactment group for the 2nd Armor and 82nd Recon Division. The 2nd Armor Division was over in Europe and eventually became under Patton's control, I believe. Reluctantly took control of the 2nd Armor, from what I understand. Currently, right now, we have the M4 Sherman, uh, affectionately named Babs, the, the M20, which is armed personnel carrier. Um, the scout car, which is made by the White Manufacturing Company, is also part of the museum, and there are several other vehicles that aren't with us today. They've required a whole bunch of work. When we first uh, started working on this particular tank, it was really in a state of disrepair, to the point where we had to completely strip it down to the hull. Uh, I had to take the turret off, pop the gun out, remanufacture the gun for reenacting purposes only. It is not a live gun at this point. So. Uh, and then uh, repowered it, and its debut mission was out in Michigan, which was an accomplishment. We did that vehicle in less than three months, which is a whole lot of work. The M24 Chaffee came to us uh, originally as part of the museum, but it was a running vehicle, always needs maintenance, uh, which we work on these things quite a few times throughout the year just to keep them parade ready. The M20 armored personnel carrier actually came out of a barn and had been dormant in there for almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. And we winched it out of the, out of the uh, barn that it was in and uh, got it back and had it running within a couple of weeks. Yes, these original, are all original yeah. World War II vehicles, that's correct. Uh, their guns are actually rigged to fire a mixture of acetylene and oxygen or propane and oxygen but there is no projectile that comes out of these barrels at all. Typically, these vehicles have more speed than brakes, so you got to be careful with that, you know. Um, one of the biggest pleasures we had uh, when we restored this is that we were fortunate to come uh, into possession of a crated motor that I think originally came back from Israel, and it was a uh, brand new or remanufactured overhead valve 1100 cubic inch Ford V8, and it's a 500 horsepower motor, very powerful and the day we get that thing fired up is really really cool i mean lit right up in world war ii i believe everything we have was gasoline powered i know the germans played around with some diesels i know their half track down there is uh, diesel powered but these are all gasoline yeah and this tank's really cool i have a fondness for this one it has a twin flathead cadillac v8s which is a great motor Automobile engines. Well, modified, I'm sure, you know, because uh, they don't have all, they have more demands on them than a typical automobile would have. But, you know, you have to remember during the war when uh, they geared up for, you know, the production of these vehicles, they pulled greatly off the automotive industry, which had all the motors and everything in place ready to go. I believe the V8 in the Sherman here was originally designed as an aircraft engine. And some of the early Shermans actually had a radial engine in which is an aircraft engine, much the like Hellcats. the T-6. Yeah. The Hellcats, even the Shermans had eight-cylinder engines. Well, I grew up uh, with a, a deep family knowledge of World War II. Everyone in my family was affected by it. My father's uh, still a living veteran. Thank you, Dad. I love you. And uh, my uncles and aunts were all involved with the war effort. So I had always an interest in World War II. And then um, I moved into a particular neighborhood where I fell in the group of a bunch of people with similar interests of World War II. And the next thing you know, we got tanks, we're playing with it, and it really turned into something very nice. And um, what we really enjoy doing about it, at least for myself, is uh, meeting veterans and seeing the looks in their eyes. And it's very rewarding to do that. You know, it's really good when you get get them in front of the vehicles and near the vehicles because they'll just start talking to you and they'll start telling you stories, maybe even stuff that they haven't thought of for 50 or 60 years. It's really, it's really something when you meet a tank driver, you meet someone that uh, drove an armed personnel carrier and they'll just come out with it, you know, which is really great, really great. Uh, you know, I've had people step off the curbs at parades and thank us for our efforts and you know, I had a woman step off the curb a few years ago, Marbo, gave me a big kiss and said she was five years occupied Germany. So stuff like that really gets you. You know, we've got to keep, got to keep history going.